With advancements in technology, the industrialization of metal binder jetting is now feasible. In order to leverage these processes for metal binder jetting, the part must be designed to take advantage of the technology. In this video, we will demonstrate the entire metal binder jetting process from design to finished product. As you will see in this video, DSB is uniquely equipped to be able to facilitate every step of this process in our manufacturing facility in Janeville, Wisconsin, providing our customers a one-stop manufacturing solution. DSB's approach to one-stop manufacturing encompasses the process from concept to final production. Because of this, we've established our new technology center. This center has four primary purposes. The first is to test and develop new materials, as well as create centering profiles. The second is to collaborate with customers in product development. We have a standing invitation to all of our customers and industry partners to come on our site and work with our team in our new tech center to develop and improve upon product concepts. The third purpose is small scale production. Whether our customers are looking to test a new product in the market or test the robustness of a new design, we are able to support their endeavor. The final purpose of our center is serial production. Once an application has been optimized, we are able to support our customers with volume production. Let's take a look at the equipment we have in our new tech center. Our Innovent Plus printer with a small build box is ideal for R&D, part samples, and prototyping. Our 25 Pro printer, which will be featured in this video, is suitable for small scale production as well as R&D. It has a build space of 400 millimeters by 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters tall. Coming soon to our new tech center is our 160 Pro printer. This printer will be intended for serial production with a build box of 800 millimeters by 500 millimeters by 400 millimeters tall, it is two and a half times the build volume of competing systems. Our Elnick vacuum furnace is programmable, which allows us to optimize the center cycle for alloy development. This furnace allows DSV to develop furnace profiles as well as run small batch production. The last piece of equipment in our new tech center is our fully automated Arborg molding cell, which is used to develop metal ejection molding and our trademarked 3DM processes. DSB is committed to investing in new technology and expanding our capabilities. As these capabilities grow, so will the new equipment in our new tech center. Now that we've introduced our new tech center, we will explore a potential metal binder jetting part. This part, a urea flange, was selected because of its potential for light weighting and net shape production, which can be leveraged through the metal binder jetting process. This is an example of a urea flange designed by a customer. We can note the symmetrical outside features. On the top of the part, we can see a counterbore and three flanges. On the bottom of the part, we have a cone. The left part, we can see the part DSB designed for metal binder jetting. The outside of the part contains the same symmetrical features, but with considerable light weighting. The top of the part has the same counter bore and three flanges, but with lightweighted features. The bottom of the part contains the same cone feature. Let's dive deep into the 3D model of both parts. As mentioned before, both parts contain the same key features. Three mounting flanges, a counter bore on the top of the part, 
and a cone on the bottom of the part. With the design freedom of metal binder jetting, the part was lightweighted. As a result, the part had a constant wall thickness throughout, and all unnecessary material was removed from the center of the three flanges. In addition, the key features can be printed in that shape. The metal binder jet design could not be produced using conventional manufacturing methods due to the undercuts in the part and the hard to reach machine areas. Once the design is complete, the CAD format is converted to an STL file. This allows us to transfer the data to our printer with a USB. The flexibility of metal binder jetting allows us to cater the print for specific purposes. Three such examples include different types of parts or different versions of the same part in a single build box. This unique advantage to metal binder jetting allows for development and production flexibility. The second example is a tightly packed layer of a single design. By closely nesting the parts, the printer throughput is optimized. The third example is a full build box of the same part. This allows us to maximize the throughput of the printer and also reduce the number of setups needed to make those parts. Once the build box has been created, our technician Alexis can load the format and begin the print. Now we will take a look at the metal binder jet process in our 25 Pro. This build contains three sets of five unique designs for a total of 15 parts. This print allows us to create and test design iterations simultaneously. Now we will walk through the steps of the metal binder jet process. In the first step, a heated lamp moves over the face of the powder to dry the binder as well as maintain the temperature of the print bed. Next, we will dispense powder on the print bed and then roll a flat plane across the print bed. Finally, the print head travels over the print head, dispensing binder over the part geometries. Each layer of this print is 50 microns thick. By combining many of these 2D layers together, we are able to create unique and precise 3D geometries. In our 25 Pro, it takes us approximately 40 seconds to complete a layer. After the print is complete, a cure operation is required to provide enough green strength for the part to be handled. This operation is achieved by heating the binder to a couple hundred degrees Celsius. 
Here, our technician Alexis is loading the finished print into the Cure oven. After Cure, the parts now have enough green strength such that they can be handled. This leads us into our next operation of depowder. During depowdering, it's necessary to remove all loose powder from the part such that it's not centered into the final part. This is currently done with brushes and compressed air. As can be seen, this is a labor intensive operation. DSB is looking to leverage its internal automation group in order to automate this process to both decrease the labor requirements as well as increase the quality of this operation. Here is an example of our internal automation group leveraging automation for part handling. Once the part is depowdered, it is ready for centering. An important consideration in metal binder jet design is center shrinkage. As can be seen, the ready to center green part is roughly 20% larger than a centered part. This size change is similar to what's seen in metal ejection molding. For our centering furnaces, we have our previously discussed Elnick vacuum furnace for prototype and production development. We've been utilizing this furnace to test materials and benchmark center performance. A key competency of DSB technologies is high temperature centering. The furnace shown is on one of our press center lines and provides us a means to high temperature center in a continuous process. We are looking to leverage our in-house experience and the largest capacity of high temperature centering in North America to industrialize centering of metal binder jet components. After the part is centered to its desired material properties, it can be shipped to the customer or proceed to additional manufacturing if required. At a one-stop manufacturing facility, DSB is able to provide additional post-centering manufacturing. We have an extensive secondary machining department which is capable of milling, turning, tapping, and much more. If other specific post center operations are needed, we can develop them in house. In this example, we can see our custom built brushing cell. In this cell, the robot precisely manipulates the part to break edges, add curvature, and meet surface finish requirements. This is one of many examples of our internal automation team solutions to meet customer post centering needs. So as a recap, we started out with a customer design of a urea flange. We then redesigned that part to be optimized for metal binder jetting. We lightweighted the part by removing unnecessary material, but still maintain key features to the part. We still have the counterbore on the top, the three lightweighted flanges. And then finally, we still have a cone on the bottom. As a process recap, we started with the design of the part, which we optimized for metal binder jetting. The design was then moved to the printer via USB. During the print, individual layers of powder and binder were printed until we yielded a 3D part. After print, the part was moved to the cure oven so it would achieve its desired green strength so it could be handled. Once the cure was complete, the parts were depowdered to remove any loose powder from the parts. 
Finally, the parts are centered to their desired material properties. Metal binder jetting accelerates production development, allowing DSB to proceed from a design to a centered initial part in about a week. And that's what makes DSB your one-stop metal binder jetting manufacturing partner.